know that uh, we're not part of church, but you don't mind with being here. <laughs> and we don't mind at all, amen. So, uh, and uh, we're used to getting throwing uh, tomatoes, throw it at us, and all, and so forth. Just kidding, amen. Yeah. But anyways, uh, really, it was really been a delight to know Miss uh, Rosa, her love for God, amen, her love for people, amen. And uh, came right in here, fat right in like, like she was just one of our own. And I just think that that's a testimony of God and His people, Amen. And I admire that. I'm going to really, I really am going to miss Miss Rosa. And um, just um, I noticed a couple of things that uh, had happened with me and her, and just the um, always when she always seen me, you know, she always recognized me, you know. Hey, Pastor, how you doing, you know? And I remember one one time walked out the door, and uh, I was uh, went outside and to tell people bye, and came back in there, and she was the next one coming out, and she told me she says, "What uh, uh, she said? Uh, what she said? She says um, we're so glad that you're our pastor, amen." And I was like, "Wow, man! I mean, you know, it just felt like that. You know, this was her home, you know, and uh, just a tremendous." testimony for me you know and uh, i look forward to seeing her again and uh, uh she's not done yet i mean it's not done until the lord says okay it's time to come home uh who knows she could pull out some of this god does do miracle things but i just think that um uh just a been a delight to know her amen and so many people i was just thinking about as nathan was doing the prayer request so many people that i've met here in this church that have gone on to be with the lord and and uh boy it just uh i don't know i mean i've only got so many years in serving the lord but i think of all the people that have gone on boy what's what a time it's going to be uh there in heaven amen and um I, you know i've been through a lot of hard things in my life as young and and i'm not saying how i even got to to be where i'm at today but i've all but i've always had this impression you got to keep pressing forward and, uh, and i think that that's the way i live my life today amen and uh, sometimes it can be quite mixed up you know so well he's a man without emotions i got a lot of emotions amen i've just learned to keep them inside and, uh, and i think that today i i remember when i was a little kid i always go to bed crying because mom and dad couldn't get along you know the things that break our heart when we're young they don't they don't change when you get older. They still break your heart, amen. And one of the things that breaks my heart about God's people is when they can't get along, amen. And uh, or anybody, you know. I mean, I, I don't think I have an enemy uh, in my life, amen. And uh, uh, except for the devil, but hey, man, he's a common enemy for all of us, amen. And uh, but anyways, uh, uh, I got a I got a somewhat a good report. Uh, almost done with my paper, amen. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm doing good or bad. Uh, they uh, had to write a, a paper was to 3,000 words, and uh, I think I'm at 4,300 right now. And uh, I'm not sure if that's good or bad. <laughs> uh, too many words? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, anyways, I need to get that clarified up. Amen. But I got all. My, but I've covered all my points. Amen. And, uh, and I just uh, finished it up today, and uh, if I had, to, I had to go back and uh, take some things out, I'd just delete the introduction, amen, just get to the point, amen. And uh, sometimes my introductions are just longer than the message, amen. And uh, so, so anyways, uh, I know my introduction, I looked at it, it was like 630-some words, so I can delete that, and I'll probably be right at where I need to be, amen. Anyways, uh, John chapter 9. Uh, pray that you uh, uh, keep this upon our hearts. But uh, I'm really impressed uh, this Christmas season. Um, I know we today we uh, took time for the kids. We were supposed to do it last night. And we have, within the 10 years, somehow developed a system. Mama puts up the tree well that well we usually get a tree that we cut it down and this year we weren't able to do that and uh we we got the uh, tree that was given to us and um so we put that up and uh one of those artificial trees and 
my wife began to pull it out of the box and she began to notice it wasn't so easy as she thought it was going to be. She figured, well, I'll just throw this uh, Christmas tree up there and we'll be done. Well, it was the kind of Christmas tree that you had to learn to put together and you had to follow the steps, you know. This branch went with this identification and so forth. And she looked at me and she pulled out a little limb like that and she goes, look at this. I said, I don't hear one word about it, amen. <laughs> I, my idea, we go cut a tree down, stick it up, and you're done. Amen. You got all the limbs where they're supposed to be. Amen. But anyways, uh, well, we got a system. We put up the tree, and, you know, and she put it up there and put the base around it and put on the lights. And, you know, and sometimes she likes to throw them beads on there, you know, and, uh, and uh, she did. She put it all on there. Uh, the Monday night, got, I mean, really enthusiastic, got it on all there. Got to the bottom of it, ran out of lights. And uh, Tuesday, she went to uh, Myers to get some things, you know, some groceries and all. And she thought, well, you know, hey, I'm in Myers. I'll just go ahead and get some lights. And uh, she did. She got some lights and came back and finished the bottom of it. And, uh, and then I got uh, looking at it, and I said, you know, something pretty odd about that tree. And she goes, well, what is it? I said, well, I don't know. This uh, I mean, you got all these lights that look kind of uniform, you know, the white lights, they all look uniform. But when you get to the bottom, you got this big old blue patch. And uh, the lights were a different color. And so, and uh, so anyways, uh, you know, they, I don't know if they were bright white or what, but they look blue to me, amen. And uh, so anyways, she, you know, last night she uh, said, okay, uh, well, I'll just take everything done and start all over. And she did. She she uh, took all the light, all the beads off, took all the lights off, and had to stretch all that out. And uh, I was in my um, uh, office studying, and I, and I told her, I said, well, I'll go get more lights. And uh, anyways, um, that was last night, and I don't know, at the end of the night, I was real weary. And uh, the kids talked to uh, the mom into, I, I don't care, I mean, it don't matter to me, but they talked mom into sleeping in the living room floor, and uh, I, I said, that was good, and all I remember is we, they put on a movie, and I'd wake up every once in a while, and I'd say, go to bed, be quiet, <laughs> and I was out, buddy, I, <laughs> I was out, amen, and uh, anyways, um, uh, but I, I, I got to thinking, I said, man, I better go, I have to go to Lowe's and get the lights, because I remember which ones they were, and uh, then I uh, got dressed, got ready, and get ready to walk out the door. And I walked by the tree, and I looked. I said, wait a minute. It don't need no more lights. It's got, and, and, uh, it's got all the lights down to the bottom. And uh, so I just went over there and gave my, hug, my wife a hug. So you know what? Thank you. Amen. Because I sure didn't want to go to Lowe's. Amen. But our system is that Mama does the, um, the, tree, order, uh, the tree lights and the beads and all that and gets it all uh, ready and then the kids, their job is to come in there and put all the ornaments. So I'm sure by now you're wondering, well, what is your job? Well, I'm the ornament sorter, amen? I sit in the floor, I grab the ornament, here, you hang this on the tree, amen? That's far as it goes right there, amen? And uh, anyways, uh, that's about how it worked out today, and it seemed to be a pretty good system to me, amen? Seemed like everybody had fun. I stayed out the way, just getting them the ornaments, and they hung every ornament we had, amen? And I'm sure if we had more hooks, they'd put more ornaments on the tree, amen? Uh, but they hung all the ornaments that they uh, possibly could, and and, uh, and I'm just glad that part's over, amen? I love Christmas times, amen? But I don't like putting up all the decorations, amen? I like looking at them, but I don't like putting them all up, amen? And uh, so anyways... Uh, uh, we appreciate uh, uh, just that. I've been thinking this year, as we look at all the lights, what do they really mean to us? You think about the lights and that we look on our trees and the lights that, uh, and if we can, you know, we're going to take the kids, drive around. I know in South Carolina, uh, we have a designated place to uh, uh, Johns Island County Park always puts up millions and millions of lights. And, uh, and the kids love it. And I love, too. I love going by there, riding around there, and looking at the lights and stopping at the little confession stand and getting your hot chocolate and 
uh, buying one of those five dollar uh, marshmallows, you know, that one of them big ones and all, you know, let them burn it up and then drop into the fire, and you got to go buy an oven. I mean, I like all that stuff, amen. But I think about today, what is really light unto us, amen. And uh, you know, you think about a lot of the kids, and uh, I had my mother call me and say, hey, um, and what I don't understand that. Her daughter that she had, you know, the half sister I have, won't even let her see the kids, and uh, never was been able to speak to her grandkids. And and I said, well, you know, when I called my mother that day, I uh, I told her I said I, I forgive you, and you know, and I, you know, I want to restore a, a relationship with you, and not not because you're worthy of it, but because of God's grace, Amen. And uh, so she called me and said, uh, listen, I got some. Uh, things I'm going to send to uh, you know your children and and then my aunt called me the other day and and uh, said hey I got some presents on the way and and uh, and I think that each each situation is a place to where we've had to restore relationships and uh, that when my daddy passed away when I was 15 years old and uh, and I left uh, from the funeral and went back to uh, South Carolina, he died in Georgia, and they bought a plane ticket for me to go to the funeral. And uh, but when I when I left uh, that day from that funeral home, it had been almost 18 years before I ever spoke with my aunt again. And it's not because I didn't want to; it's just because I was alienated from the family uh, for certain reasons. And uh, but I believe that today relationships are where we are to restore, amen? And uh, relationships is not just something we restore, but relationships bring light into our lives, amen? And, uh, and I think about today, uh, how what's happening, the evil that's coming on uh, the world today, and, and, I, and I'm saying to you today that it was spoken to me this past uh, Sunday that over in Wyandotte, uh, that folks are going to church over there and over in Wyandotte they're sending the police officers uh, to go into the uh, churches uh, checking out if they're doing social distancing and uh, folks are doing their part as far as the CBC laws uh, and all of that and now I'm hearing more and more uh, that uh, the fact that um, um, if uh, you having Christmas, and um, I forget where it was at. I'm trying to think where it was at. But if you're having Christmas, then the law is, uh, is going there telling people uh, that you need to, you can't, uh, you can't spend time with one another, and uh, you can't uh, congregate, you can't have fellowship, and all of that. And uh, and I think that today, you know, we see that a lot of that is happening because. Satan is trying to put the light out of Jesus Christ. And so when you think about the lights this year, think about what really matters. And I think that today, singing these songs, and my, uh, my wife, we, we've uh, both uh, 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 committed to it, but we want to be able to, this coming Sunday, uh, have some song books and... Uh, and, and and uh, have the songs where the Christmas and all, and we want to revamp them. We got some uh, in the back back there, but we want to revamp them. And we want to be able to sing the Christmas songs every service from now to uh, Christmas. And uh, every service we're going to sing the songs. I mean, it don't matter if we sing them over and over. And, uh, and, I, and I appreciate Nathan tonight doing the same thing. And, uh, but I think that that's what we ought to dedicate ourselves to. Amen. And, uh, and I think that what a fact, what a remain, uh, a, a, a great thing it is. And so tonight, I want to present to you, Jesus illuminates the way. John chapter 9, and uh, look with me, if you will, in verses 1 through 9. The Bible begins to read, And Jesus, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? 
Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me, while it is day, the night cometh, when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go wash, the, uh, wash in the pool of uh, Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went, uh, he went his way thereof and washed and came seeing the neighbors therefore and they which uh, before had seen him that was blind said is not this he that sat and begged some said this is he others said he is like him but he said I am he let's go to the Lord in prayer Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for your love and your grace, and we thank you, dear God, for what this uh, season truly means. I thank you, dear God, that today we can truly know what light is. And I pray, dear God, that we may comprehend it in our own hearts. And I ask today, dear God, that, Lord, you will protect, my, uh, uh, protect me, dear God, from saying something uh, that would be unworthy. I want every word that would come out of my mouth uh, to be honorable uh, to the Holy uh, Savior. I think about today, even our actions, Heavenly Father, should be in content, Lord, to believe in, uh, in a way, dear God, that, Lord, we are truly honoring you with our lives. And, Lord, today is becoming dark. It's becoming evil. But I pray, dear God, that we as your believers will continue to point the way and, uh, and that you'd always shine your light so that we may understand what is true, what is right, and what is honest. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. I want you to think with me uh, as today we find this, the reality of these Jewish leaders coming in this particular time, and, uh, and yet they're pointing some their ideas you think about uh some things that is coming out and and uh you you find this where uh these leaders you're going to look a little bit further with me if you will and uh i think verse 10 if you may the bible says therefore said they unto him how were thine eyes open and uh you know we find a lot of people in that same category today uh that they're questioning today how were your eyes open? Now notice with me how the text describes this in verse 9. Some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him. But he said, I am he. Now I want to think about today that as we are presenting Christmas or that we are experiencing Christmas, that there must be a difference between light and night. Uh, I think about as the darkness is coming upon the world and they're telling us uh, that we can't worship our Savior. Uh, they can't, uh, that you can't uh, conjugate, you can't uh, be kind, you can't do a lot of things that we normally used to be able to do. And I think about uh, what that really means. But I want to press upon you today that uh, it ought to be, if anybody knows that their eyes are open, it ought to be that you ought to know that your eyes are open today. I'm saying that uh, according to this man, he was blind, and yet uh, some believed that his eyes were open, but they weren't too sure. But the man confessed of his own mouth, I am he that was once blind, but now I see. You know, I, I like the fact that Jesus lights the way, and yet no matter that there are uh, uh, Sadducees or, or, or uh, Pharisees, uh, even in our days, I mean, you ought, to, you ought to look back and do a study on uh, the Sadducees. The Sadducees were those who didn't even believe in the resurrection. 
They didn't even believe that Jesus Christ could raise from the dead and be the very Savior that he is. But the Pharisees, they believed in the resurrection, but they tried to add works to the salvation. And, uh, and I think of today, we find a lot of people are in that same category. And yet, there's a, uh, there's a uh, world out there that tells us, how do you know that you're saved? Because we've seen the light. Amen. We know what the light is. So light points the way. Amen. And uh, I remember uh, several months ago, uh, I think during this past year, we were trying to have uh, services and the lights kept going out. Amen. You remember that? I do. I remember that clear as I could be. Amen. And uh, we would break out our phone lights and uh, just kept on going. Amen. But you know what? That little bit of light means a lot. Amen. I think of today how much light we have in our life would mean a lot to others that are going through some fear, some doubt, some, some kind of financial struggle. I wonder that today, what kind of light that we are shining on uh, people. But I think about today that these religious leaders, they rejected Jesus, and, uh, but they remained in their spiritual darkness. And, uh, you, know, uh, I, you know, I appreciate some of the things that uh, the President, uh, President Trump has said uh, in, throughout his uh, administration. Uh, but I think about some of the things and some of the uh, things that he put out on Facebook. And I remember him holding up a sign just like that. And, and, uh, but uh, the picture was that Jesus is king. Amen. Now, if you don't appreciate that, there must be something wrong with your salvation. Amen. And uh, I like the fact that I think that, uh, that that's where we are to be today. Amen. We are to be little lights that are shining in the world, pointing to people, let them know, hey, you can remain in your darkness, but Jesus Christ is still the light of the world. Amen. I think that that's a uh, main factor of our lives. And, uh, and I know that a lot of people are going to look at the trees and they're going to look at all the glamour. But if they're not seeing Jesus Christ as the light of the world, it has no emphasis to what it means. Uh, I, I want to say to you today uh, that, G, uh, that John was a witness. He was a witness to the gospel. He was a witness to the deity of Jesus Christ. And go with me if you will, John chapter 20. John chapter 20. And... Uh, Look at me, if you will, verses 30 and 31. John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. The Bible says, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. That's tremendous. Amen. That's wonderful. You know, and if, we're, and if they take the time to any celebrate anything, we ought to be able to take the time to celebrate his life. Amen. You see, we're not saved because we just seen the light. And uh, although we understand what the light is, but we're, uh, but we're saved through his name. Amen. And, uh, and I'm, uh, I want to be able to rejoice in that every day. Amen. Listen, folks, this is a light that the world cannot put out. Amen. I mean, it's like them trying to go up uh, and send a, a rocket ship trying to blow up the sun. They can't do it. Amen. I mean, if they sent a, uh, a rocket and it got into the atmosphere and was able to get near the sun, uh, as soon as it touches the atmosphere of the sun, it's going to blow up that rocket. Amen. I'll tell you today, you and I ought to be the kind of believers that are blowing up the negativity, that are blowing up the doubts and are blowing up the fears. Because when you got Jesus, amen, when you got Jesus in you, 
and he is your light, the world can't put it out. Amen. I don't care how much laws they had. I had a, a lady uh, describe to me uh, uh, that uh, couldn't believe that we're having church. And we're not having church out of, uh, out of uh, I don't know what you call it, but we're having church because we believe in God. Amen. Amen? And, uh, and I think that today uh, we would understand that uh, we understand what is right. When we come to church, we understand what's important. And uh, but uh, but I want to move on. And, and I want you to consider that uh, that Jesus Christ showed the signs uh, that he was the Messiah. Uh, he showed the signs by uh, turning water in the wine. I mean, turning. Yeah. Turning water in the wine. Amen. I mean, it was a miracle. One of the great uh, miracles that he did. And uh, then. Uh, healing the noble man's son. I mean, he raised the dead. Amen. And uh, only the Messiah could do that. And, and then here, uh, healing the important man. And these signs only proved that Jesus Christ uh, was, the, uh, was who he was, was, was who he said he was. And I like the fact what he said in uh, uh, John chapter 20, uh, back there in uh, verses 30 and 31. But what he said uh, in verse 31, but these are written uh, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ. Amen. And, uh, you know, not, not everybody believes that. You know, and you say, well, how is that possible? Well, it's possible. That's why we go over in the New Testament and, 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 uh, and it, was, uh, it was written down for you and I to test the spirits. Amen. Not everybody believes that Jesus Christ is the Christ. Not everybody believes that Jesus was the Son of God. They don't believe it. If they had did, uh, in the time when Jesus walked the world, I believe that there had been a lot of people. Amen. That meant more people to get saved. And uh, you know that Jesus uh, healed a lot of impotent folks and he healed a lot of folks that were poor and wretched. Uh, and I think about today, I mean, he healed me. I was poor. Amen. And uh, unintelligent. Didn't know what salvation was. Lost. Lost in my sin. But he healed me. Amen. And he showed me. And he had grace in my life. And I think, of that, I think back uh, today that if, uh, if these pharmaceuticals or uh, these Pharisees or these Sadducees, uh, if they would just by chance take God at his word, who he is, he would too save them. And yet we find that Jesus went on and he, uh, he uh, did much more uh, as in uh as miracles you think about the uh bringing satisfaction to feeding the five thousand and uh, uh stilling the storms amen and uh you know healing the blind and raising the blind. i mean he did all these tremendous things but what does it mean to you you know the miracles you heard jesus heals you heard jesus answer prayers but what does it mean to you you say, well, preacher, uh, what are you getting at? I'm saying to you today, we hear about all these miracles and we, uh, we, we know the, uh, the, uh, the Masonic uh, miracles and we know about all these, uh, these great things that God has done and that Jesus Christ has done. And we look into the Bible and we find that the Bible specifically says that Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus is the Christ and that Jesus is the Son of God. What does it mean to you? Well, I think that to me, what it would mean to me is that what I've gone through in the last year is to express that some of these great things come out, and fears and worries and pondering what's the future going to look like. And then I read my Bible and I get to thinking, so wait a minute, what does all that mean to me? Got thinking about it. Wait a minute. That's my Savior. That's my Lord. He's, he's my Jesus. Yeah, I mean, he might be the, the God of the Bible, but wait a minute now. He's the God that lives in my heart. He might not, he might not just be the light in the Bible, light it to the world, but wait a minute. He's my light. 
He directs my steps and he helps me to see the way and to have a clearing understanding that this is the way. Walk ye in it. Boy, that, that, term, that brings hope to me. Amen. That helps me to remember that, uh, that uh, I may be tomorrow, I may be shackled, I may be chained, I may be in darkness, but wait a minute. One day it's all going to be over with. Where am I going to be at? I'm going to be with Jesus throughout all eternity. And I think it makes an indifference, amen? I think today Jesus wants to illuminate our way. And uh, sometimes, sometimes I believe that he allows us to experience the dark things so we can comprehend what light truly is. You know, this world is going to see some great dark things, and it's only going to be the preparation uh, of the tribulation times. And yet, you ought to be glad that those days will be shortened. You ought to be glad that, hey, uh, that when, uh, when uh, the Antichrist is revealed, on that very same moment as he is revealed to the world, you and I are going to be raptured out, out of here. Amen? I think what a tremendous time. What a great expectations for you and I. And I think that today we must keep pressing forward to know that Jesus Christ is the light that illuminates the way. So I want to go with you uh, a few things to, tonight. Number one, if you look with me in verses uh, one through seven, we've already read it. But we look at this as again, and uh, I want you to see the context was taking place here. Here we come to chapter 9, verse 1. The Bible says, And Jesus passed by. He saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he, uh, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, uh, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is in, by interpretation sent, he went his way thereof and washed and came seeing. I want you to see with me tonight. Jesus gave physical light to this blind man. Physical light simply has the understanding that he was blind, but now he sees. I like the fact that uh, we can look into this man's life and look into the blindness of his life and we can find that he has the same characteristics as a lost sinner does. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, eight, uh, verse 18, the Bible says, Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. You know, you think about what, why is evil happening today? Well, you think about why is a lot of things uh, turning and going uh, sour and, and uh, going in a wrong way. Well, I think that is happening because there are a lot of folks that perhaps are in leadership that have blind hearts to the gospel. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I'm not saying, and I've said this Sunday and I'll say it again tonight, I'm not saying to you that, uh, uh, that I respect all the things of uh, our governor, uh, uh, I forget her name, Whit Whitmer, Whitmer uh, uh, what's her name, Whitmer, and uh, I, I, don't, I don't respect all the things, but I have to respect her that she's a human being. And I think of fact that today, uh, if, uh, if God was to set a chance how he would make it an opportunity for you and I to present the gospel. And, uh, and there are times when we are just unprepared. I think of last night, for an example. God smote my heart in it. 
But I think of last night. We uh, my uh, came home yesterday, and uh, my uh, uh, my wife's van. I, uh, I forbid her to drive it because the brakes aren't uh, comfortable right now. Uh, have a brake leak in the back, and uh, so she's not to drive it. But then, uh, uh, but then uh, came home. And so she's going to uh, go off to the store, and she took uh, the two boys, and they jumped in the truck. And uh, anyways, uh, got up in, uh, in the truck and drove down there. I told my wife, I said, look, you could go everywhere you want to go, but, you, hey, you have to put gas in it. Amen. I said, it's a good bargain. Amen. Drive my truck all you want. Just make sure you put gas in. Amen. And uh, anyway, she went down there, down the Kroger's, and that's where she likes to go, and she put gas in it, then called me up. Now, uh, mine now, when I got home, she had the two girls in the bathtub, amen. And uh, so, uh, so, our, so I had to uh, uh, keep an eye on them in the bathtub, amen, making sure that Abigail don't drown uh, Lydia, amen. And so anyways, uh, 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 so she called me and said, uh, what is wrong with your truck? I said, well, <laughs> nothing, amen. What's wrong with my truck? And uh, so she uh, said that, uh, well, I put gas in it, but now it won't crank up. And I said, well, I said, uh, did, you, did you smack it around? Were you abusive to it? She goes, I wasn't abusive to your truck. And I said, well, I, I don't know what's wrong with it. I said, I've never had a problem with it, amen. And uh, I said, it goes and does everything I want to do, amen. And uh, anyway, she goes, well, it ain't doing nothing for me now, amen. And I said, well, I said, does it, does it turn over? She goes, yeah, it, it turns over. And I said, well, put it, uh, take it out of park and put it in neutral and, and uh, try to uh, crank it up. And, well, she did all of that. And, uh, you know, uh, women, they're concerned about what other people say. And she goes, you know, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate you allowing me to drive your truck. But right now, it's making me look like an idiot. Amen. And, uh, and I said, well, I said, all right. I said, you're going to have to give me time. I said, I'll come on down, but it's going to take time. Amen. Uh, remember now, I'm still washing the girls. Amen. And uh, uh, anyways, finally, I, I got I finished washing the girls and getting them dressed and, and uh, you know, got a procedure. Amen. You got to go through the whole uh, uh the whole commotion of drying them, amen. And uh, before you could ever uh, dry them, you, you got to chase them down, amen. That's just how it happens for me, amen. And uh, little Abigail, boy, I mean, she's running around the truck, uh, I mean, running around the house with no clothes on, and uh, Lydia's in the uh, tub and uh, splashing water like a duck in the uh, pond. And uh, anyway, so I'm running back and forth, and I get and finally get all of that uh, taken care of, and Finally, I uh, found the diapers to put a diaper on her, amen. Uh, I didn't even know where the diapers were. Normally, we have a little section and uh, where the diapers were and uh, put the diaper on her and all. And uh, 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 so I, I got the diaper on her. When I got the diaper on her, I picked her up, and uh, now I had to go find some clothes for her, amen. And I picked the diaper up, and I looked on the, this little thing my wife Somebody made for her, you know, it's a little thing. And I looked, and there was a little wet spot there. I said, well, that wasn't there before. And I said, but I ain't got time for it now, amen. And so I went and uh, got the clothes and got all that, got the girls finally dressed and all. And uh, anyways, uh, uh, Lydia, just as bad as Abigail, uh, she's like Tigger, amen. Uh, you remember uh, Tigger on Winnie Pooh, always bouncing around and, Boy, I'll tell you right now, I mean, uh, when, it, when it comes to washing the girls uh, for daddy, it's a, it's a job, amen. And uh, so anyways, we finally got clothed up and Jack is on and stuff and gotten on the, uh, writing in the, uh, <clears throat> going down to uh, Kroger's. And so now uh, I'm driving this van without any brakes on it, amen. And uh, so I go down there and, uh, but that, I have a little experience, amen. Uh, to uh, know how to downshift the uh, the brakes, amen. I mean the the transmission. So, anyways, went down there and uh, get out the uh, vehicle, and I figure, well, I'll just go on down there and crank it up. 
Well, I, I, uh, I cranked and cranked and cranked, and finally, man, I mean, it, the, uh, the truck started making me look like I was an idiot as well, amen? So I said, well, I'm going to get this thing on out the way, amen? So I pushed, I, I backed the truck up. Uh, I mean, I pushed the truck over off to the side. And, you know, just as well as I almost got there, and, uh, I mean, I was only 10 more feet to be where I wanted to be in the parking lot. Par I was going to park right in the corner of the parking lot. I figured, well, I was going to have to park until tomorrow, which is today. And uh, uh, anyways, as uh, uh, soon as I had 10 more feet to park it over in the corner, two guys come up and say, hey, can I help you? And I said, well, <laughs> yeah, sure, man. You know, not a problem. You know, hey, I'm, I'm almost there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, what I'm describing to you is this. I went through all of that, and uh, really, I missed the opportunity of handing out a track because I was so worked out as trying to get the truck situated and get it back going and so forth uh, that I missed the opportunity, and I said, you know what? Boy, that really hit me. Why, why did all that happen? Maybe it really happened because I was supposed to be a small light into somebody's life. You see, instead of me being the light that I was supposed to be, uh, they were a more of a light in my life than I was to be in their life. I don't know if they're saved, but I know that I drove home that, uh, after that incident there. And I drove home after, I, and I finally did get the truck cranked up. But then I drove home, and I got to thinking, I said, you know what? I said, God, I'm sorry. You know, I was supposed to be an illuminated light. And you think about sometimes we go through hard things. Sometimes we go through uh, darkness, and we go through dark times, and we, we get so frustrated about what's happening that really we forget that we're to be the light of the world. Not the lights on the Christmas tree, but the lights that are in our hearts. And you know, sometimes I think that today we, we need to understand that sometimes we are to be that physical light in the lives of people. Now, Jesus was a physical light in this blind man's life. And uh, we, we've already looked at uh, sometimes people can't see the light because the blindness of the heart John chapter 3, verse 3, the Bible says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We know that today we have the kingdom because we've seen the light. We've experienced the light in our lives, but the unsaved hasn't. I don't care how intelligent they are or how much uh, 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 of uh, talents they may have, if they don't express a life like Nicodemus, coming as a, uh, as a child, coming to Lord Jesus Christ uh, as a child, they'll never be able to understand spiritual things. I think about what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4 uh, through 16, that the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For, whom, for who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. I think that today... We must remember that uh, we have the mind of Christ and we are to not let the darkness of the world to cause us to be fearful and not be able to live by faith. But that we may understand that, hey, we are that physical light that the world would see today. We are the light that perhaps uh, they would understand that if they're going to experience that physical light in their hearts and that it will transform them to experience that uh, that uh, spiritual light forever and ever that they must understand that the only way they experience that light is through salvation amen 
So the man, uh, so the blind man, he was blind, but yet now he sees. And yet he was a beggar that was begging. Amen. He wanted to see, but he couldn't. I think of today how many people uh, do call and they're begging. You know, we oftentimes, especially around Thanksgiving, especially around Christmas time, we always find someone begging to uh, pay their bill. They want to pay their light bill. They want to pay their mortgage and, and all of that. And uh, it just, uh, I've been here for six years, and every year uh, the phone always racked up on the recording. Somebody wants uh, or somebody is begging uh, to have something that is uh, a physical need taken care of. And so people today, we find that are begging, and yet we look. Uh, spiritually that people are unsaved and they're begging for some hope in their life. You know, I think about some of these, these things or some of these leaders, uh, they may seem to uh, know it all. But may I say to you, without Jesus Christ, they know nothing. They're going to enter, a, uh, enter into a devil's hell and, uh, and then they're going to be begging then they may reject the opportunity to beg to God today. But when they get into eternity, into a devil's hell, they'll spend all eternity begging God to let them out. But God won't hear them. He'll turn that part off. I'm sure that uh, that's the way we would describe it, but I believe that God will hear them because everything is known to God. You know, God does shut his, uh, that God does cast uh, our sins uh, behind him. And the Bible says from the east to the west, he'll remember them no more. But he does know where they're at. And he does know what we've done. And so I think of today that the unsaved, uh, they are poor uh, yet in God's sight, but they are of need of salvation. Second Corinthians chapter four, verses three through six, the Bible says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them, which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God should shine unto them for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sakes. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. I think of today, if the lost was to see that glorious light of Jesus Christ, how would they see him? How would they see that light? Well, I want you to understand, they'll see that light through the physical light that you and I show unto them. And I wondered, like, as I expressed earlier, that perhaps maybe the truck didn't work, not because it was just a, an odd thing, but perhaps maybe God made the truck not to work so that I could go and be a physical light. Now I failed and wished that I never did, but yet we all have opportunities when we pass them by. And yet uh, I think that today it ought to help us to understand that no matter where we are at in our life, in this particular time of season, we ought to be able to express that physical light of Jesus Christ. So the beggar was not only blind, he was not only begging, but he was helpless. How many times we hear people wanting a cure, but they cannot get that cure because it is a helpless, uh, a, a, a helpless disease, a helpless thing. And I think about today, uh, we, if we could ever get a glimpse at how unable we really are, and then we can get a glimpse how able God is. You know, God, we're not, uh, just because God don't cure our diseases doesn't mean that we are helpless. 
if we do have salvation, we're not helpless. We have been helped because our greatest need is not being cured from some disease. Our greatest cure is the need of being saved. And we must remember that Jesus illuminates the way. And even in this day, he illuminates the way through the physical light that we shine. And I pray that tonight, First Baptist Church, the members, uh, the, uh, those that are involved, those that who attend will be the light. Not for First Baptist Church, but will be the light for Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus illuminates our way, and he will illuminate the way of others, but he'll do it through you and I. So we find that the, uh, the blindness of the, uh, the blind man had characteristics the same as a lost sinner. And now I want you to think along with me that the blind man's cure shows us just how Christ saves sinners. I think of today, he, uh, that the blind man, uh, Jesus came to this blind man. Notice me, if you will, in, uh, in our text. Uh, and Jesus, uh, verse 1, chapter 9, verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And uh, as Jesus passed by, he noticed a man and he went to him. And uh, the Bible says in verse 2, and his, and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus says in verse 3, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I think of today we find that the Savior's willingness to cure others as, as you and I have been cured. But I think about today, he goes and he passes by the life of people and he's ready to experience, uh, uh, ready to give them the experience of his grace. Therefore, he passes by them. And yet, there are times when you and I need to be like the man of uh, the Ethiopian. Amen. When God sent Philip, to, uh, to the chariot of the Ethiopian, and God sent Philip to simply tell him how he could be saved. I think of today, you and I must understand that the grace that God has saved us is the same grace that he trains us to be soul winners for him. Christ could have passed by him, because, uh, and, and could have not looked his way, because although it was on the Sabbath, uh, it was uh, the, 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 the weekend of the Sabbath. Look at me in verse 14. The Bible says, and it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. You know, many times, some, uh, many times we, uh, we do things, God has us to do things, and it is on that day where we are to be in God's house. You know, and I believe that today, many people today are using that as an excuse. Well, God, you, I know that you, uh, 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 I know that you command me to go to the house of God, but I know that I was supposed to be here by your grace and to be a help. But yet, listen, when I think of today, Many people are, are using that as an excuse. You say, what does all that mean, preacher? Well, there are times that when we understand God's grace, it's not just for us to uh, have an forgiveness in our sin, but God's grace is to be used in a way to help others understand his grace. I think of today as we find that Jesus was passing by and we find him as uh, he was on his way to Sabbath. And, and I understand that there are times when uh, the ox is in the ditch and we have to get it out. But it, it's not a, a habitual thing. Amen. Because God is always going to have us to take care of things. We are to be people who is not only upright, but that we're organized. Amen. 
Uh, I remember some folks tell me that if you want to be on time, leave 15 minutes early. Amen. And uh, always leave early. And uh, it's taken me 49 years to understand what that means. Amen. Uh, but I've learned I can only look back and say, you know what? I've never quit on that. I, ne I, I believed it. And, uh, but it took time to practice it. Amen. And, uh, and I think that today we must understand it takes practice to uh, exercise God's grace. Amen. And uh, I think that today we ought to be the kind of people that are exercising grace in the life of other people. You say, preacher, what does that mean? Well, there's going to be folks today that we perhaps may know and folks that uh, may not understand who uh, Jesus Christ is. But we are to be patient enough to express the grace of God in their lives. You ever thought about what it's going to be like when we go to heaven and we and, and we and, and the Bible says that we'll be judged for all the the good things and the bad things? You ever understand what it's going to be like? Why? What's God going to judge you for? Well, you're saved. He can't judge you for your sins. That's already been uh, uh, the atonement's already been taken care of. So what is God going to judge a believer for? Well, I believe that God is going to judge a believer by how much grace he bestowed in the life of other people. You see, we like when people bestow grace in us. Have mercy on me. I, 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 I'm young. I don't understand. I make mistakes. We want folks to look, overlook our faults. But there are times we're not willing to look, overlook their faults. And so I believe that today God would want us to, uh, during this Christmas season, be able to express grace a little bit more. You know, people need it today. They need that grace. And I think of today, this man, he needed that grace. He was blind. He had no, uh, no means to be cured. He had no one taking care of him. But here comes the Savior. And God had compassion on him I think of today how much irritation the blind man had in his life how irritable he really was that he couldn't even defend for himself couldn't even provide for himself and yet when the Savior came and had compassion on him that he melted at his knees amen and so today, I want you to see that the blind man's uh, cure can only show us how God saves sinners. He not only uh, gave the man grace, but he cured the man by his, his power. Amen. You, you thought about that lately? That, uh, you're, you, you know, you look at the, what's happening on the news and, and, uh, and you're fearful about what all was happening and no one, uh, and, and we're dreading what's going to, uh, what 2021 is going to look like. But man, I'm saying to you today, have you thought about the power of Jesus that had cured you? You see, no matter what they may do unto us as believers, they may try to shut down the church. They may try to put us in some consultation camps. They perhaps may even try to kill us. But may I say to you, they can never distinguish the power of God in our lives. And so they don't like that. The devil doesn't like that, that he can't destroy the power of God. And I think of today uh, that this man proved his faith in Christ by being obedient to the word and, and what it would mean. And I like the fact where verse 3, Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. You see, folks, don't let this Christmas season pass you by without living in the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, people may not like it if you uh, say Merry Christmas, but live in that power. Amen. Shine in that power. Amen. And uh, if they put you in prison because you said Merry Christmas, God bless you. 
Hey, then so be it. Finish the days out. Finish your days out living in the power of Jesus Christ. And then last of all, I want you to see that the, uh, the cure that Jesus Christ had with this blind man, not only that he uh, uh, had grace in this man's life, but he gave him of his power. And then third of all, he taught him how to glorify God. I think of today that all true conversions are of God's glory alone. And go with me, if you will, Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. And look with me, if you will, in verse 6. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 6. Here we find in verse 6, the Bible says, To the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein... He hath made us accepted in the Beloved. I think of today, you and I have been accepted in the Beloved. We are to live in that, uh, in that, in that glory of God. Amen. I want to finish all my days with the, my best ability glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ in my life. Look at me if you're there still in Ephesians chapter 1. And look at me if you will in verse 12. That we, should, uh, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Verse 14. Uh, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. I think of today we ought to be able to be the kind of people that are illuminating the way even though it's in a physical light, but we are illuminating the way to the glory of God. So this Christmas season, you be that light and let that light shine of, the G, uh, of Jesus Christ so that it may illuminate the ways for others. And I pray that today uh, we're going to look a little bit more in this uh, next week, but until then... Uh, shine, shine as bright as you could do, uh, at the, the brightest you could shine uh, this Christmas season. So let's go.